No. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hi. It's pretty. Hi. This is an old new for you, huh? Who's a good little cat? These three cubs were either orphaned or abandoned by their mom in Utah. And the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources took them in and then brought them to Utah's Hogle Zoo, where they were given a health check and a head start in preparation for coming here to the Bronx Zoo. Oh, you were tough. Oh, I know. And there's one male and two females? Yep. Do you know who you have, Craig? I have the male, for sure. And they look really good. And they're really calm, which is great. I think that's the advantage for to them being at the Hogo Zoo for a couple of days and they just kind of got settled in and used to people a little bit. They had some time to adjust. Ever since we opened the Queen Zoo in the early 90s, we've had pumas exhibited there. So a while ago, the Queen Zoo put their name on the list looking to adopt puma cubs because these species are often orphaned in the wild. And now if the zoos don't take them, a lot of times they're euthanized. This one's purring. I've never seen a puma cubs this young. We had two that were here that I worked with a lot um, as adults, Mitzi and Frankie, and I just love them. When I was a keeper here 40 years ago, I had the real good fortune to take care of a couple of adult pumas. And they've always, since I was a little child, that they've always been my favorite North American mammal. Hi. She looks tinier. Pumas are, are remarkable animals. I mean, you're talking about an animal that, as an adult, will range in weight from maybe 120 to 150 pounds. And yet they're capable of bringing down a mature elk, which could weigh 800 pounds to over 1,000 pounds. So an animal that is many, many times heavier than it. It's a good boy. A good boy. Oh, good job. I think she and I will get along just fine. What you looking at? Welcome to New York. When people take care of animals, the animals kind of lose their natural fear of the people. So really very hard to reintroduce carnivores back into the wild after they've been reared by people. So the next best thing is for them to come here where they're going to be taken care of and provided for for the rest of their lives. Already? How you doing, little one? Oh my god. They're adorable. They're just so cute. The Puma Cubs have been at the health center for four days, and they're seven weeks old. They had never really been this close to a Puma Cub. I guess they didn't realize their eyes were blue like this while they were young. I know they will change a little bit as they get older. The Cubs have spots right now, but as they grow, the spots will disappear. It takes about one year for the spots to go away. It is a little bit of a relief to see them playing. The first day, of course, they were just in the box, totally hiding any sound from this door. They would run off, but they're getting braver and exploring, so that's good. <laughs> Milk and meatballs, <laughs> so appetizing. Right now, we're just making sure that they are eating and gaining weight and then they don't come down with any illnesses. We're not really expecting that to happen, but anytime there's this big stress in a young animal's life, that's always something that could happen. So this morning, what worked well to slow them down, Taria, yeah. was smushing up the meatballs a little okay. bit. So I'm just gonna break it up a little bit. Yeah. Given the rough age of about seven weeks in the wild, mom would start bringing back meat items. So this is a normal thing for them to progress to. Hi. Let's get your food, little mama. You want some? Yummy. This is our star eater, apparently. Hmm. Here you go. OK, no, that's not where you need to go, friend. Sorry, buddy. We can see if maybe he wants some from the syringe. The females have taken to the this type of feeding really easily. Uh, so the male's the troublemaker. He likes um, to bite the syringe and spit the milk back out at me. Oh. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm gonna 
have to redirect her. Hi, girly. You gotta go get your own food. Yummy, look, there's more. There's more in your bowl. You don't need the syringe. You know, we do wanna phase out syringe feeding them. We're not gonna keep bottle feeding any animal forever, so it'll be good for them to get used to associating the bowl with food rather than the syringe. As they get larger, stronger, more aggressive, it's important for them to eat on their own so that my hand does not have to be involved in or around their mouth or claws. Uh-oh, you got a burp. You pretty much finished up, little lady. That's it, no more. Little angels, they're little angels for now. Oh. <laughs> I really love cats. And so any time I get to hang out with these guys is pretty special. And knowing that we're doing something that they maybe wouldn't survive in the wild potentially makes it very exciting for me to be a part of that process. Don't you dare. That's a fun toy. <laughs> it's got five <laughs> points for me to bite. Eventually these guys will make it to Queen Zoo. They have a puma there already, so this is something that they have expertise with. And so while we're quarantining them here, we're overseeing their medical care, they will eventually go to the Queen Zoo. Oh my gosh, you could just watch them all day. Bye guys, bye. Hi kids. Hi guys, how you guys doing? Good to see you guys again. Look at you guys. Good growing fast. It's so alert. Once the puma cubs get to the queen zoo, they'll be under my care and responsibility. So it's time for me to familiarize myself with them and have them become used to seeing me around all the time. Oh my goodness, Hi, okay. Girl. Hi. So they're still, so they're still a little standoffish mm -hmm. when you come in, but. Um... Everything's so new to them, especially seeing me again. I have only met me once. Hi, big guy. It's hard. Hi. Oh, it's okay, yeah. it's okay. We're gonna have a great time together once you get over to Queens. We're gonna have a great time. They're on just meat now, so they're not oh, getting really? any That's they're great. not getting milk anymore. Oh great. And how they've been doing with eating? I mean, you've just been separating them and they've been yeah, doing fine. They still try to go between, you know, each other's mm -hmm. bowls, but they're finishing a lot of their food. Why are you so nervous? <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, I she's know. A big old bad poop. <laughs> probably intimidating to see someone of my stature walk in here. That's why I went on my knees and to see what happens. Maybe they become more, a little more comfortable. I'm super excited to have uh, the opportunity to work with such young animals. It's a rare opportunity to develop a great bond and a relationship, which is gonna make it easier for us to care for, for the cubs. They'll, they'll get to know me. For these little guys, I guess I could look like a grizzly bear. <laughs> it's really, just incredible how adaptive animals are because these three cubs had their whole world is turned upside down. And I mean, what we do for so many animals and so many species here at the zoo and the zoos all around the country and the world is helping those animals and helping those species survive. And it's really a nice story because these animals found a forever home with us. 